So this is the RM on a postpartum 48-hour post cesarean patient. In the center, you're going to give minimum data set that um, a nurse or the person grading the paper needs to know about. So this is a 30-year old gather to pair to who is 48 hours postpartum C-section delivery. She is RH positive, group B strep negative, right? And rubella immune, and is she breastfeeding this baby? And she's preterm, right? 34 weeks. Breastfeeding, 34 weeks, um, and baby's in the NICU. All right, so her major nursing diagnoses are pain related to uh, was she painful because of the incision? She had a classical incision. She had the okay. double uterus, double cervix, so she had a... Related to surgical incision. Repeat C-section, so she had uh, scar tissue from her previous okay. incision as well. And as evidenced by, how did you know she was in pain? Grimacing, okay. high pain, and pain score. Scale? Right. What was her pain score? It went anywhere between 3 and 8. So we're going to say it's 8 when we start. Okay. Uh, she had impaired attachment related to the fact that her infant in the NICU, as evidenced by worry and concern, Over baby's absence. And was she pumping? Pumping. She had um, impaired communication. Related to a language barrier. as evidenced by incomplete understanding. Um, of both verbal and written, right? And uh, the nurse, uh, the person doing this uh, CRM, I also put fluid volume deficit because she had had a cesarean, so she's related deficit. Related to uh, postoperative EBL greater than 1,000. That's evidence by EBL greater than 1,000. Okay? All right, so in order to start the web, I'm going to do these in different colors if I can. I'm going to be asking the nurse, Who's filming? <laughs> Was her pain related to her fluid volume deficit or her bleeding? No. No. Was her pain related to having the baby in the NICU? Yes. Yes, because it increased the pain because of anxiety. And was her pain related to communication difficulty? Yes, Same the, thing. the more painful she got, the less she was able to mm -hmm. communicate. Okay, so increased pain equals decreased communication. And this is a great way to do this, Karen, is make them write the relationship yes. along the arrows. Okay, so was her uh, attachment difficulties related to her pain? Yes, the anxiety about this increased the pain. Was her attachment difficulties related to communication? Absolutely. Um, she didn't understand what was going on with her baby. And was her attachment difficulties related to her uh, bleeding? No. No. Okay. Was her impaired communication related to her attachment difficulties? Yes. 
And was her impaired communication related to her pain? Yes. Was her impaired communication related to bleeding? No. No. Okay. Was her bleeding related to the fact that she couldn't communicate with you? No. Was it related to her impaired attachment of baby being gone? No. Was it related to her pain? No. So she wasn't on any oxytoxics, things like that, that we were making her painful because of her bleeding? No. No. Okay. So the way we're going to quantify this is we're going to count the number of arrows that leave each bubble. So that has two arrows that leave. This has two arrows that leave. This has no arrows that leave. And this has two arrows that leave. And you're going to have to make a decision as to how you are going to uh, make the highest priority. Um, and in, in this case, and in many cases, if you have pain or bleeding or things that have to do with uh, gas exchange, you know, the ABCs, they usually trump. Um, the first thing that the nurse decided to do, to do when she was taking care of the patient was manage the pain because the patient was complaining about pain. So in this case, we're going to call pain the number one nursing priority. And then the next thing that has to happen is that you have to think about and justify which one of the other two bubbles up to be the second priority. And because when pain was managed, pain medicine was given, in this particular patient, pain was managed. Um, it took two or three uh, assessments for that to happen. But the next thing that came up in priority was not so much the language barrier or the communication difficulty as the fact that uh, there was a lot of problems with her baby being separated. So pumping and visiting to the NICU, she couldn't visit the NICU if her pain had been managed. So it turned out that in this instance, this was the number two um, nursing priority. Um, just by drawing this web and then talking to the nurse who was involved, uh, it's my uh, question, if I have a nursing diagnosis on a web and there's no arrows that come from it, what it's doing there? Um, so I would posit that at 48 hours postpartum, this person wasn't actively bleeding as she had a blood loss of uh, more than 1,000 cc's, but the nurse tells me that she wasn't symptomatic um, and there are no arrows. This, not a, this diagnosis doesn't affect anything of what's going on with her this morning, this particular time when the nurse is taking care of her. So I actually believe that this could be listed, if I were grading this, I would make this a risk for uh, and not make it a nursing diagnosis at all. It's certainly something that's going to affect how you decide to um, assess her and the assessments that you're making because the reason that the nurse told me that this wasn't a big deal was that she wasn't symptomatic. And she did that on the basis of what her assessments were. So does that mean, Professor Bell, that I couldn't put at risk for on this map? You can, but if it doesn't have any arrows that come from it, and risk fours often don't have arrows that come from it, it's not important in the decision making. That's very different than a person that doesn't really have any of these problems. And that would be the example, the best example of that is a normal newborn. Everything's right as rain. Pink as a rosebud, baby's crying, baby's peeing and pooping and eating, fine. So the only th and but yet does that baby need a nurse? Why are you there? You know there are things that the baby needs you as a nurse to be looking at and taking care of. And so in a um, a normal newborn, let's say this is your newborn um, web. Oftentimes, you all that you have is risk for ineffective thermoregulation, risk for um, nutrition less than body requirements because the baby hasn't uh, fed yet. Risk for altered elimination of bilirubin, because that's a risk for an every newborn. And so those things, if you have absolutely nothing in the way of uh, pathophysiology, these are normal physiology for a newborn, and that's what's driving your care. And you would be doing your uh, web with the risk force. But most of the time, in a web that has true nursing diagnoses that are driving your decision making, you can tease out something that you called a diagnosis as a risk for, or if you include the risk for, out it will be all by itself, and you've seen this a bunch, mm -hmm. with no arrows, because it's not really uh, influencing your prioritization right But now. until I went through this process, I might not have got that until I saw there were Maybe no not. arrows, right? Or yeah. it depends 
entirely on what time this is done for. It absolutely does. This is this woman's 48 hours postpartum. And if she was two hours postpartum with a thousand cc blood absolutely. loss, it absolutely. would impact your ability to go see your infant because yeah, she's not she going to let off the unit. Yeah, she can't. She's actually so that still being watched for that. And that may, and so in that case, right. two hours postpartum, right. I would guess uh -huh. that the, if you do this, this would be number one, mm -hmm. this would be number two, and this would be number three. Because it's the point in time. Right. So the most important thing to figure out is your slice of time. Mm -hmm. And and this was the, for like a four hour window in the AM of day two post up. And as long as I, as the grader, know that, it just makes sense.